blessings on a, uh, another great, wonderful, and blessed week that we have. And uh, uh, pray that uh, uh, we've seen God's faithfulness and the goodness of His grace and mercy that saw us through a, another wonderful week. And uh, pray that uh, this coming week be uh, an even greater week. Amen? Amen. I pray this week that comes is not just a, a week that we live through, but we be alive through. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's... Uh, uh, we come alive, Amen. When we worship a living God, Amen. So let's uh, let's give Him all that we've got this morning. And as I say, sometimes I say a uh, hundred ten percent, right? Amen. I got a guy at work that he always argues like, like you, a hundred percent, absolutely everything. And I said, well, there's a lot of people that have more to give than what they think. So by a hundred percent more, we'll press in and give Him even more than what we think we can. Amen. Because uh, in our weaknesses, God is uh, is main strong. Uh, a few announcements. We'll get on into worship this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, continue to remind you all of our uh, calendar events that we've got coming up. I hope by now most all of you uh, have uh, got these dates uh, set and uh, made plans to uh, uh, for these dates. But in case you have it, October 28th is going to be our Fall for Jesus Fest. Uh, November 12th is the date we've got set for a homecoming uh, Thanksgiving service. And December 10th is going to be our Christmas program. It's uh, scheduled for 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I uh, also want to continue to remind everyone of the gravel fund that we've got uh, uh, going for some additional gravel to, to help with the church property. So I appreciate those that have donated towards that. And uh, uh, if you'd like to make a donation towards that, uh, you can put it in a... Um, uh, offering envelope and just note on there uh, gravel uh, or you can note it on your check if there's a certain amount of your uh, tithes or your offerings that you'd like to go towards that. Uh, Operation Christmas Child, September, uh, through the rest of this uh, month we're still collecting those socks and the lip balm, the little chapsticks. Uh, celebrate Recovery, uh, we're coming up on another lesson night, uh, lesson 25, it's entitled The uh, uh, Seven Reasons. You're like, what are the seven reasons? That's why you come to find out, amen? So I encourage you for that. Uh, again, still uh, uh, appreciating and, and uh, requesting uh, help with the refreshments, with the setup and cleanup on Tuesday nights. Uh, if that's something that you could uh, help do, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And you know, folks, even in the smallest things as those, they are as vital to the ministry of Celebrate Recovery as anybody that comes up and gives their testimony that shares and helps lead or do anything else. Uh, that is as powerful a ministry in doing that uh, as anything else. So if that's something that you could help out with, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I think those are the main announcements that we had. Uh, I did uh, hear of uh, some... Uh, uh, prayer requests needed to, uh, to keep an eye on. I think Scott, I heard this morning, was in the hospital. And Pam wanted to ask if your mom was doing better. I know we need to keep her in prayer. She's still really weak and congested. Yes, she needs prayer. And um, Scott's fan relates that he does have pneumonia. He does. And Miss Debbie failed this morning and they took her to Jackson Hearing. Oh, okay. And they said her heart rate was running in the 30s, so the cardiologist is. They, they admitted her. So, yeah. Got you. Okay. We'll uh, lift all of them up as we open up in prayer this morning, too. And uh, we'll, uh, let's not uh, keep the Lord waiting any longer. Let's go on to Him in prayer and let's give Him some praise and worship this morning. Amen. Father God, we praise You, Lord. What a great and blessed day that You've given us, Lord. We thank You, Father, for how beautiful the sun is shining outside. And God, I thank You for how beautiful You're shining in this place today. Lord, even in the... the uh, short time that I've been in here today, Father, Lord, I already sense the goodness of your presence in this place, Father. Lord, and all, I give you thanks already, Father, for what you're going to do in us, Father, as we gather together to just make great the name of Jesus in this place today. Lord, and I just pray that we uh, praise you with all praises, Father, Lord, and worship you with all worship, Father, Lord, that we give our heart, mind, and soul unto you today, Father. Lord, any sin, I pray we repent of it. Father, any distractions, I pray that we lay at the foot of the cross today, Father, Lord. And let our hearts and minds be lifted up unto you this morning, Father. And Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, that uh, your grace would surround uh, these individuals, Father, Lord, that we've mentioned, Father, in need of your prayers, Lord. And we uh, just thank you, Father, for uh, you already knowing their needs, Father, Lord, and already meeting their needs, Father, as only you can. 
Father, I just pray that your glory and your goodness, Father, Lord, your awesome power uh, be sensed, Father, uh, in the midst of their needs, Father. Lord, where there's a great need, Father, that's where your presence is usually the strongest, Father, Lord. And I just pray that it's showing in such a mighty way. Lord, and I pray your presence is showing in a mighty way in here today, Father. Lord, I pray you fill this place, Lord, as we worship you, Father, Lord, and as we receive your word. Lord, you are the author and finisher of our faith, Father. Lord, and I just pray that you would do a mighty work in our faith, building us up and strengthening us in yet another week, Father, Lord, to go out and to serve you, Father, Lord, and be a faithful witness for you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, stand with us and let's worship.
Amen. The uh, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. The line of the tribe of Judah. He is alive. Amen. Amen. And it's a, a joy to be able to praise Him for not only just being alive up in heaven, but being alive here in our hearts and our presence today. Praise God. I have the uh, children come forward, please. All right, please. Oh. I guess that uh, gets new meaning to be in the middle man, right? <laughs> Amen. If you will uh, join, let's go Lord in prayer and thank you for uh, uh, these uh, uh, wonderful young ones we have with us. And, uh, uh, ask for blessed over them and our ties and all things. Let's, let's go, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for these young ones that we have here with us, Lord. And uh, uh, we just praise you, Father, Lord, for what a, a tremendous gift and a blessing that they are, Father. Lord, and we uh, take this time, Lord, to thank you. We are so grateful, Father, for having them, Lord, uh, in our families, Father, in, in a church family here, Lord. Uh, they're, they're so vital and so important, Father, Lord, and we recognize that, Father. So we take this time, Lord, to not only thank you for um, uh, the, the tremendous gift that they are, Father, but, Lord, to uh, ask your blessings upon them, Father, Lord. Ask your anointing on the teachers. I ask your anointing upon them, Father, Lord, thanking you, Father, for the anointing of your word, Lord, thanking you for what you're going to accomplish, Father, as they get together to know of your greatness and your goodness, Lord, to know of your might and your power and your splendor, Father, but most of all, know of your unconditional love, Lord, that they may uh, grow to unconditionally love you, Father, and walk with you. Father, we ask your blessings over our tithes and offerings, Father. Lord, we, uh, do, we give to you, Lord, as an act of worship, trusting you, trusting in your sovereignty to provide for our needs. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's great to be back in the house of the Lord today. Uh, we're going to hit uh, yet another milestone for today. Uh, uh, God willing, we're going to finish up uh, Romans chapter 4 today. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to follow along. We're going to Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 20. We're going to look through verses 20 through 25 uh, this, uh, this morning. And uh, real quickly, while you're turning there, uh, I thought I'd give you, in case you're wondering what may be going on, a couple of them. Folks looked at me a little funny when I came in through the front doors. I was kind of leaning forward and knees bent over and uh, looked like an a, a older man. And uh, I'm not going to admit to looking like an older man yet, but I was certainly feeling like one. So I had, uh, uh, yesterday, had uh, decided that I needed to pull all of our storage stuff out of our garage and reorganize it to make more room for something and uh, ended up biting off more than I can chew. And as my grandfather or grandmother would say, yeah, just like your grandfather without his gums in that apple. 
He's working on it, working on it, not seeming to get nowhere and accomplishing anything. But uh, nonetheless, I got it done at like 9 o'clock at night, and I am surely paying for it. And uh, gave me that realization, that thinking of, you know, kind of uh, depressing a little bit to, you know, kind of get the feelings of being an older person that can't do the things they used to do. And nobody's giving me any hope saying that it would get any better. It was like, <laughs> sorry, brother, it's only going to get worse. Like, Thanks a lot for the encouragement. <laughs> But, you know, speaking of encouragement, I was talking to another gentleman at uh, the gym. You know, I started working back to at least try to feel a little bit younger. And there's a guy that's there, he's, in, he's like 65 years old, and he still bench presses like uh, 290 pounds or something. Just, you know, amazing what he can do. And I was talking to him, we were talking about getting older, and I said, well, I'm feeling a lot older. I can't do what I used to do either. I said, but uh, I, I do have good news and bad news. I said, the good news is... I can, still, I can still lift 240 pounds. It's like, well, that's pretty good. What the bad news is? I said, I need the handicap rail in the stall to be able to do it. <laughs> and he's like, oh. <laughs> but nonetheless, I digress to tell you that, you know, if, if, if you see me, you know, doing some kind of weird dance over here, it might possibly be the Holy Ghost, but it might be these bruises I've got on my feet also. So yeah, we're going to go with the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> But Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, we're going to pick back up here and, and finish this out. And uh, uh, as you may see in the, the title for today's message, uh, Factors of Faith, Part 2. We started talking about uh, uh, looking at Abraham's example of his faith uh, to key in on some key aspects of his faith that's important for us to understand. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that today. So... Uh, I was uh, trying to weigh out if we'd read these verses first uh, or uh, go into uh, the message. I think we'll read these first, so follow along with me. Let's uh, start out Romans chapter 4 and verse 20. And it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that He had promised what He had promised He was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. And so uh, I made the, the, the notion of it last Sunday about how faith was important and how it hinges on, how everything hinges on our faith. And kind of talked about how important it is, it's like, well, for us to, to be able to, 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 to have faith, we need to understand what faith is. And Paul uses Abraham as an example, not only to counteract what uh, the, the Jews had believed was accounted for righteousness, but not only proving differently how it is the example of Abraham, uh, how it was his faith that was credited to him for righteousness, but it goes even further to give an analysis of what this faith that Abraham was that gave him that credit of righteousness. And so we're going to dive into that and, and look at the latter part of that today. But before I do, I want to start out by giving you a, a little illustration that came to mind uh, when it comes to faith uh, that uh, I was reminded of when, when I started putting this uh, message for today together. Uh, how many of you have ever seen the Indiana Jones movies? And, you know, they've had several different episodes of it, and uh, I, I remember watching some of those, and I remember in, enjoying uh, several of those. And um, I, I liked several of the different ones. Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think, was, you know, one of the better ones I think was made. Uh, but one that, that I liked also was the, the Last Crusade. And you may remember that one. That's the one that had Sean Connery that played uh, uh, Indy's father. And uh, go ahead, ladies, y'all. You can go ahead and say it. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh -huh. While y'all's laughing, I expect to see some of y'all at the altar. Repenting <laughs> for, for... No, I'm kidding. But, but Sean Connery plays the, the father of Indiana Jones um, in The Last Crusade. 
And I was at work one day eating lunch, and they, we got a little TV, and they were playing that on the uh, TV screen as one of the movies while everybody was uh, uh, coming in and eating lunch. And I was kind of uh, nostalgic at, you know, uh, enjoying the, the storyline and the, and the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the action that goes on into that movie. Uh, but as I enjoyed that story and that suspense, I was kind of analyzing the theology of that particular series that was going on in that, I guess what I would call that Holy Grail myth uh, that the story kind of revolved around. And if you haven't seen it or don't recall, it, was, uh, it had to do with this little uh, chalice that was um, uh, claimed to have caught the blood of Jesus Christ at His crucifixion. And that who... Um, that this chalice would be the giver of uh, eternal life to whoever was the recipient of whoever finds this particular chalice. Now, with that being said, we know that Jesus' blood does pave the way for eternal life for us. But I won't dig into the theology directly behind that particular movie. But there comes this scene that is the kind of the climax of the scene where you have the heroes and the villains... Uh, they're in this uh, uh, centuries-old um, temple, and it's full of booby traps. And so they're facing these booby traps, and they're facing each other, uh, all in an attempt to try to obtain this uh, chalice. And I, when it comes to a highlight of it, um, one part that I was watching on the screen that was there is when they come to the point to where uh, the, 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 the villains are sending mobs or they're sending minions up in battle and their, their bodies are falling back down headless and there's this big encounter. And then in the midst of this encounter, Sean Connery, uh, Andy's father, he gets mortally wounded. And so he's there uh, with a fatal wound, um, not expected to, to be able to survive that. And so the only hope Andy has of saving his father was to continue on through this gauntlet alone in order to try to achieve, the, uh, to obtain this uh, chalice to save his uh, father. And so he deciphers the clues and he gets to the very last obstacle that's between him and this chalice. And that obstacle turns out to be a endless uh, pit or a endless chasm, I guess I would say, uh, that he that's way too wide for him to be able to jump to, to get across. And so uh, here he is at this narrow entrance, kind of this narrow gate. And this, this holy grail is on the opposite side of this huge cabin or chasm in a little cave that's there. And he has one last clue. And it, the clue goes, only a leap from the lion's head will prove his worth. And so he's standing there and he deciphers that clue and determines what he has to do. And then he's left with a decision on what to make. And so instead of explaining a little more detail, I was just going to show you like a little quick minute clip of what happens during that play. So brother, if you can play that back there real quick, you may have to turn the volume up a little bit for us. There we go. So there's where he's standing across the chasm. Turn on up if you can, bro. Only a leap from the lion's head. Only a of his worth.
Amen. And so I believe this, this was kind of a, uh, to me, when I saw this, it was at least a reminder of that. And I thought it was kind of a good expression of what we call stepping out in faith is really all about. See, there really was a bridge there for him. He just could not see it with his own eyes because it was an optical illusion. And again, there was really a bridge there, but he just couldn't see it from the, the, the point of view that he was standing in. I don't know if you could see it from the screen because of the reflection of the lights or not, but when it kind of panned away, you could see the difference. But when, from the perspective that he was at in that narrow entrance way, uh, he, could not, um, uh, he could not see the bridge with his own eyes. He just had to take a step of faith and believe it was there. And so the clues were clear. The, the, the clue made it clear what he had to do. And he'd already been following the clues from the previous uh, booby traps that was there before. So, and he had trusted that those clues would take him where he needed to go. And I say that in relation to this. Just like how uh, he trusted in those previous clues and they got him to the point that he was, that's how we can be with the Word of God. We can trust God's Word and what He tells us. God's Word is very clear to us. And although we may not clearly see with our natural eyes, God has proven to us time and time again, I pray that we've been able to see it in our lives, that He has proven that we can trust His promises. We can trust His Word today. And so if, if, if or when we take that leap of faith, uh, Jesus did die for us and that God did raise him from the dead, we can cross that abyss into eternal life. Now, I'm not talking about eternal life of living on this earth. I'm talking about something much greater, and that's eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in heaven. And that leap of faith goes like what we see in Romans 10, 9. That if thou confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So again, as I mentioned, everything on the gospel hinges on faith. And again, that's why Paul analyzes, and analyzes the faith of Abraham so intricately. And that's why I think it's important for us to uh, look at these aspects of faith that, that Paul is showing to us here. So again, last week we looked at faith was, uh, Abraham's faith was confidence in a person. And we looked at how Abraham's faith was considerate of the problems, of the circumstances, of the obstacles that he faced. Uh, but today we'll finish up and we'll look at the last two, and that is this, that, that Abraham's faith was consistent in its progress. And lastly, that Abraham's faith, it was convinced of the promises. So let's take a quick look at that first one here, consistent in its progress. Uh, I'd like to look back at Romans chapter 4 and verse 20 again where it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now I've heard the saying before that the, the same sun that melts wax hardens clay. Well, what does that mean? Amen. Well, it means that, the, that both of these... Um, um, uh, materials are composed of two different things, but they uh, come underneath the same circumstances, and that is of the sun. And because of the, what they are composed of, because they are composed of different things, they respond differently to each one of them. The composition produces an opposite result under the same circumstances. And that's kind of how it is with people in their faith sometimes, uh, faith sometimes. Is that some, when they face delays or they face uh, discouragement in their life, it may cause them to waver in faith. But others, oddly enough, interestingly enough, when they face delays or discouragement, they actually find strengthening during those times. Some people waver in their faith, yet others are strengthened by it. And when we look at that Greek word there, uh, in King James it says he staggered not. In uh, New King James and some of the other translations, it, it translates it as uh, waver not. And that Greek word there, it, that's what it means is to doubt or to waver. And by definition it means to have two minds 
or to have two opinions, to think one way and then think another way. Have, have you all ever done that before? They kind of go back and forth and be like, oh, with this, oh, no, with that, oh, with this, or, or with that. And a lot of times, I, uh, some people look at me and they think that I'm having some kind of debate in, in my own mind. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having a, an argument with another personality of mine. I'm just going back and forth between these uh, opinions. Um, I'm wavering between the two, and that's what he's talking about here. And that would seemingly be the tendency for Abraham is to, to swing back and forth between uh, two circumstances he has. One, he sees the circumstances of his old age and the barrenness of his wife, but yet he has the promise of God. And it would seem natural for the tendency to kind of swing back and forth of this, be like, oh, you know, this, this don't look good because I see, you know, where we stand here. But yet, you know, God did promise this, but I don't know, you know, I'm this and that, you know, you know how, how is this going to work out? But, but God promised, you know, and so that would be a, 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 the mindset that would seem to be a tendency of one to have. It's a tendency that many people do have, but that's not what it's saying here. It says that he staggered not, or he wavered not. And what it is, is Abraham chose to be patient and wait on the promise of God through whatever the delays or disappointments that he may seem to have faced during the time. And again, I pointed out that what it says here, giving glory to God. And you may think, well, praise God, he was giving glory to God, but there's a purpose for this being in the Scriptures for us to look at. And I want to make sure that we see that this morning. It says that he staggered not giving glory to God. Well, what does that mean? It means that he, uh, the more opportunities he was given to praise God in faith led him to a stronger trust in God. And I can kind of relate to where he's coming from using... You know, the, the, uh, the, the, the years that Jeff and I had prayed and, and, and believed in God upon the promise that He would uh, grant us a child. But yet, there was that delay that was there. But nonetheless, in, in, in the process of that waiting, God had shown Himself to be faithful in so many other ways. And, and it was just reminders throughout that whole time that, you know, well, uh, I've experienced God's faithfulness here. So that tells me that God is faithful. Amen. I see God is faithful here. He was here, he, faithful here. He was faithful here. He, he's proven Himself faithful. I don't see His faithfulness in this pr particular thing, but I can be patient and trusting in Him uh, that, it's going to, that He's going to fulfill His promise because He's showing His faithfulness in this and this and this. So as we face those things, it strengthens us in our faith during those waiting. And that's what He's saying here. He was giving glory to God. He was seeing all the other opportunities of, of God being faithful to His promises in so many other areas. And He was looking at that and looking to that. And He was finding in strength in that to hold fast to this promise of him, of his descendants being as the stars in the sky or the, the sands uh, on the ocean. And so he staggered not and he gave glory to God. Now, what was it that strengthened Abraham during that time? Was it that God sprinkled some faith dust on him to build up his faith to strengthen it? What, what is it, that, is, uh, it that, that built him up that, was, uh, that gave him that increase of faith that strengthened him to hope and to trust in God for what he had promised? Yes, God can give one faith. I believe that God in all his might and his power if he wanted to just say more faith and speak it, that it would come to pass. But I believe more along the lines of what happened is more along the lines of what we may see of somebody who is wavering or staggering in their faith and trust in getting on an airplane. How many of you have flown before? How many of you dreaded the first time that you flew? I absolutely dreaded 
I got on the plane the first time to go to El Paso to, to visit Jessica's family that was down there. And I had never flown before. And, you know, I just have pictures in my head of the ones hitting the side of mountains or just leaving <laughs> a long trail of fire across them or, you know... I watch the movies that you probably shouldn't watch before you get on the plane. <laughs> um, and so I did not have much trust in flying because I did not believe the trustworthiness of those planes to be able to fly. But nonetheless, I got on the plane and let me tell you, that liftoff was horrible. <laughs> I thought, I, I, I went black. And I thought maybe at first somebody had said it was because I got lightheaded. No, I think because my head sunk completely down to my bottom. <laughs> and it was in darkness for a while. But that was the most horrible experience I had. My, I think my fingers were sore for the, the rest of the trip that was down there. Where I just, you know, gripped so hard onto those handles as it lifted up. But, you know, after it got up there and it settled down and everything was calm and it seemed to be peaceful, I was like, hey, we went up and we're not going back down yet. <clears throat> so I thought, well, maybe this is okay. Maybe this is all right. And about midway through, I kind of had calmed down. My fears had calmed. I had gotten a peace about it. And I was actually able to stop thinking about dying for a little bit and actually look out the window and be, hey, this is really beautiful out here. This is really nice. And so it's kind of like an uneasy or doubtful person that's on a plane who kind of gets settled in and kind of comes to peace at mid-flight. And what was it about me that, that brought me peace? Was it because God said, oh, fear not, my son. My, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some more faith to, that you can trust this plane and that you'll be okay with it. Might have been what happened. But really, I think what happened is, is the more... I was in that plane. And the more I had a first-hand experience of the trustworthiness of that plane, it built my trust Amen. in that plane. And in having that trust, it gave me peace. And it gave me comfort. To where not only did I enjoy the benefits of being able to fly and get there quicker, but got to enjoy the beauty of being up in the sky and seeing the sun and the clouds and all of the different things. So, um, you know, my faith uh, uh, was, I don't believe necessarily strengthened by God, but by my experience. The longer I sat in that plane and it stayed up, the longer I learned it was worthy of trust and was able to trust it more. So there was a strengthening in my ongoing experience of the faithfulness of that plane. And that's how it is with God. The more that we walk with God and we choose to, to trust Him and we experience His trust in our life, the more it strengthens us in our faith and our trust in Him. And that what I believe Abraham was doing when he was giving glory to God. He was experiencing God's trustworthiness to His Word and His promises. And it strengthened him to continue to trust God for this promise that he had yet to see. So faith is uh, consistent in its progress. And as, it, and, it, and as it stays consistent in its progress, it becomes more convinced of the promises. Let's look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. How much do you trust that God is able to do what he says that he can do? We can say it with our mouth, but you ever heard that saying that actions speak louder than words? And uh, when I was uh, praying and thinking about an example for this, uh, an example came to mind where actions spoke louder than words. Remember when Jessica and I, when we had, uh, uh, it was actually beyond when we first got dating, it was actually we were engaged and getting uh, closer to the point of, of uh, you know, we'd set a, a wedding date and we'd get things prepared for it. And uh, I remember Jessica saying, she said, I would love to go on a cruise. And my first thought was like, <laughs> that's the money in my bank account hitting the rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, she's like, and I'm thinking, okay, honey, let, let's, let's pack your bags. I'm going to take off a, a week of work and we're going to go on 
a cruise. We're going to take a vacation. We're going to go on a cruise. And she's like, ha ha, that's not funny. I'm like, and it's like, no, seriously. You know, I, 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 how do you know that I'm not serious about saying that? And she just gives me a funny look because she knew better than that. But it was, oddly enough, it was not long after that that her uh, father said, you know, I'll help pay for your wedding or I'll uh, uh, help pay for uh, a honeymoon vacation, a trip to the Bahamas, a cruise to the Bahamas. And whenever he had said that, she was ecstatic, elated. Like, that's great, that's wonderful, that's fantastic, how exciting that's going to be. It's like, wait a minute now, when I, when I said it, you're like... <laughs> but when he said it, it's like, all right. I was like, what is the difference here? And I asked you, what, what is the difference between the two? She was so enthusiastic about her father telling me, but she looked at me like, yeah, all right. <laughs> that there was a different response. And in reality, she knew that I didn't really mean it at the time. Uh, and if I did mean it, that you know, I likely wasn't able to pay for it. And if I could pay for it, I probably wouldn't pay for it because you know it's right in the middle of uh, trying to you know uh, save up the finances for a wedding and all of that. But with her father, it was different. Her father, she knew that he meant it, and that he was able to afford it, and that he had proven um, his general being her. Uh, being his daughter, he had proven to her his generosity in times past. So she knew him. She knew his capabilities. She knew uh, his willingness from her experiences from that. So because of those things, she was fully convinced that he would do what he said he would do. And that's how it is with our Heavenly Father is that we come to know who He is. We come to know that He is able. And not only that He is willing, but also that He is wanting. So He uh, has the, the right personality, He has the right capabilities, and He has the right attitude, the right desire to do that which He promises. And so we too can be fully convinced what God promises to do, He will. And so, um, this was the kind of faith that led to Abraham's justification. It's what we see in verse 22 that was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, I heard some people kind of in, 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 um, in discussing in some, some Bible studies of this, I, I recall once that the question come up was like, well, I mean, that's Abraham. But well, not just Abraham, but you got David and Moses and all these other mighty men and, and even the women of faith. And it's like, well, if I would have had those special circumstances like they had, I'm sure I would probably believe too. As though God was in their, their corner specifically and was giving them some special privileges or special access for them to be able to believe that the way that they believe. And uh, that's how some feel, that Abraham kind of had God on his side and it made it easier for them to believe. And they have this line of thinking that, if, well, if I had those same opportunities, I'd be able to believe like Abraham also. Some may say that today. And I believe some said that during Paul's time because Paul specifically addresses that in his final verses. Uh, and not only addressing it, but I think he just blows a complete hole in this line of thinking. Let's look at these last verses here for this morning. Romans chapter 4, verses 23 through 25. It says, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. So we see and we know about examining Abraham that he believed in God in a God who could raise from the dead. He knew God and he fully was convinced that God was who he said he was and that he was able to do what he could, uh, said he would do. What he said he could do. So Abraham was convinced that God, it was a God who could raise from the dead. But my dear friends, we have first-hand evidence, we have first-hand record, proof 
that God is able to raise from the dead. Not only did he, uh, Abraham just believe it, but through Jesus Christ and his resurrection, we have first evidence that God has the power to do such a thing. That God raised his son Jesus from the grave. So the object of a believer's faith is not only that God, the God of Abraham, but also in the God of our Father, the God our Father, um, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and trusting upon Him. And Paul shows it here clearly that it's not the, not the death of Jesus alone that provides the foundation of the basis by which God justifies a believer. Because if Jesus Christ would have remained in the grave, what would that have made him? Nothing more than a martyr for a lost cause. If Jesus had died and remained in the grave, that's all he would have been. But the grave could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. And by his resurrection, Jesus was shown to be the Son of God. But not only the Son of God, but the Son of God with power and with ability. And that, and, and that power showed to be the answer to mankind's problem. And way back when we started looking at Romans, what did we say that man's greatest problem was? Our sin. And God proved to be the answer to promise. Um, uh, the, the promise, sorry, the promised answer to our greatest problem. And that is our sin. So in seeing this, I pray that we see that Abraham is truly an example for our faith today. That his kind of faith needs to be our kind of faith. That our faith requires a belief in what may seem impossible. And that's this, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Seems like an impossible circumstance. But with all things, God is possible. With God, He is exceedingly able and abundantly able to do all that we could think or ask. Mm -hmm. Even things that we think are impossible, God is able to do. But not only that, our faith requires a belief in what may seem even improbable. And, that, and that's this. That Jesus' death is truly for our forgiveness. And that Jesus' resurrection is for our life. And even though as improbable as some people may believe that to be, do you believe the promises of God above that? Not only do you believe, but are you like Abraham and are you fully convinced of that? And is that faith consistent? As a matter of fact, is that faith even strengthening? Because that's what we see as Abraham as, as our example. That that faith, it is consistent in its progress. I believe today more than I did five years ago that Jesus Christ died for me. And it brings me even more peace and joy today than it did five years ago in knowing that. And having that progressive, progressive uh, that consistent um, progress in faith makes me even more fully convinced of God's promise that Jesus Christ died for my sins. But it all started with me exercising a little, what the Bible calls a mustard seed of faith. And that's all that it takes. How much faith did Indiana Jones have to have in order to take that first step? It only took just enough to get him to take that first step. But after he took that first step and he experienced that clue holding true, <clears throat> then it greatly increased his faith and he strolled on across the bridge. All it takes is just a little bit of faith for us to trust the promise of God that when he said that Jesus Christ came and was beaten and bruised and died on the cross and spilled all of his blood for the forgiveness of our sins and that when he died on the cross and said that it was finished, that He truly did complete all that was necessary for us to receive eternal salvation by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Is your faith the kind of faith that we see in Abraham? 
The faith that we read in Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21, that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that, uh, that he had promised he was able to perform. Is that the kind of faith you have in Jesus Christ? Is that the kind of faith that you have uh, placed in Jesus Christ? Being fully convinced that He is indeed the Son of God and that He did indeed die on the cross to save you from the judgment of your sins. Maybe you're here today and you haven't taken that step of faith. But God is working in you this morning to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. If God is making that known to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, I choose you today to trust in Him and take that, what I would call a lover's leap and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. May He show you His great love for you that if you would respond in love and in trust to Him today. If you would, please stand with me. I could have every head bowed and every eye closed for just a few moments. Romans 10 and verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's all that's required to take that step of faith. Salvation comes by trusting in your heart. Trusting in your, believing in your heart. Would you take that step of faith today? Would you go to God and acknowledge? And say, God, I understand now that what your word says, the wages of sin is dead. And that because of my sin and rebellion, it leaves me with a penalty to pay, and that is eternal separation in hell. But God also says that He so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that any that would believe upon Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you're convinced of that today, would you go to God? Would you go to the Lord today? Say, God, I believe it. And I trust it in my heart that Jesus Christ died for me. And God, I ask your forgiveness for my sins. Lord, and I choose this day to turn away, to repent of those sins, and trust Jesus Christ and His perfect work on the cross. That is a free gift of grace that God provides for you. All you have to do is reach out and take it by reaching out and taking Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've made that choice today. Please let someone here know about it. We'll have time of altar call. You can come forward and, and we'll talk to you about it or you can uh, make a note on the comment card. But however you do it, please let somebody know and we can talk to you about your decision and help you to grow in your new faith in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody else that has a need or just wants to spend time in prayer? Um, altar to open. Is there anyone that would come? Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Is there anyone that would come? Is he?
pray that the love of God burns like a fire in our hearts today as we leave this place. Maybe it, may it be the combustion in our, in, 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 a, in our being this week that drives us to walk in faith and obedience, to walk as a faithful uh, witness for Him in this week to come. Does anybody have anything they want to add before we close? Yeah. Um, I want to thank everyone for their prayers and uh, for the church as a whole. I'm uh, glad to see you back. You still continue to pray. I know that uh, you've got a lot of things in the family you're wrestling with. So y'all will continue to uh, remember her and her family in prayers. They uh, um, just pray God's grace meets all the needs that you have in your family. Anybody have anything else? Anyone? Going once? Going <laughs> twice? <laughs> Sold to Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> All right, if you will, uh, let's go, Lord, and we'll close out in prayer. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for your abounding goodness, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for how loving and how faithful and how trustworthy, Lord, you have so demonstrated yourself to be throughout centuries. Father, how we can look in our own lives, but not only our own lives, but the lives of those around us, Father, and the lives of um, the untold many of people throughout your words, Father. And Lord, how you have remained consistent and true and faithful and trustworthy to all of your promises. And Father, I pray that helps us, Lord. It builds us up and strengthens us, Lord. Uh, as your Holy Spirit reminds us of these things, Father, Lord, to be even more fully convinced, Lord, that you are mighty to save. And Lord, that your promise of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, it is indeed true. And Father, in that truth, Father, Lord, we can find peace and comfort, Lord, that we find joy, Father. Lord, may it be um, just blissful, Father. Make us ecstatic, Father. Lord, knowing, Father, and experiencing the faithfulness and the trustworthiness of all your promises, most notably the promise of your Son, Jesus Christ, and salvation through faith in Him. Lord, I pray that you go with us, Lord, as we leave this place, Lord. Go before us, lead God, and direct us, Father. Use us today, this week, Father, Lord, to, 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 to be a witness unto you, Father, to be salt and light, Father, Lord, to be a reflection of your love, Father. Lord, to, to, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, and it may it be by our actions as well as our words, Father. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We give all glory unto you uh, in these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.